Well, I thought I'd talk about some of the trends that are happening in patent law today and how it impacts this alliance as well as everyone out there that thinks about uh, new concepts that they want to use and some very disturbing things that are happening in the U.S. currently. U.S. companies and, and basically the Fortune 500 in the U.S. Uh, principally had about 80 percent of their assets in tangibles, brick and mortar, uh, machine tools and other things, about 20 percent in intellectual property. And that was pretty much the standard in the early 80s. Now, as far as 2005, it just flipped. It now is 80 percent in intangibles for most Fortune 500 companies and 20 percent intangibles, brick and mortar machine tools. A lot of that has come about with outsourcing companies moving out of the United States, overseas, and with that unfortunately goes a lot of the engineering. And so the intangibles that most companies are valued under are under a threat also because as they outsource their technology or outsource their manufacturing, along with that goes the engineering. And a lot of my clients over the years have made that transition. In my past life before I became a member of the much jealous patent uh, PC firm here in Chicago in their intellectual property department, I worked in-house at a Fortune 500 company with a large budget for patent, patenting and had several thousand engineers that my group and I was responsible for coming up with ideas, doing the technology, getting the patents, securing the future for the shareholders and the company and the people of the United States here. As time went by, the company started doing, quote, virtual engineering, sharing engineering with Asia and other locations, and moving manufacturing out of the United States. Pretty soon, instead of several thousand engineers that they had here in the United States, they had just a few hundred. And as far as manufacturing, virtually none. It became more of just a marketing company. And that's very sad for the United States. As a result of that, if you look at the number of patents that are being filed in the United States, it's not by U.S. companies. It's not by people and engineers here in the U.S. It's by foreign companies, foreign countries. In fact, some of the countries, as China and that, have surpassed the U.S. in total number of patents filed in the U.S. at our own USPTO. An astounding move. And recently I attended a China conference in which the Commerce Department of the U.S., who attended also, pointed that very fact out. Major filers in the U.S. now are Chinese citizens, named inventors, uh, and the U.S. is losing its edge. And then on top of this, one of the areas that we are very strong, and I've done negotiation and licensing with the Asian countries and other countries of the world, is the U.S. still is a leader in software. So what do we see in our press? They're attacking software patents. And recently in 360 law, intellectual property, out I think today, the former commissioner of patents stated that this is overblown. These software patents are very important. As I was working with the engineers a number of years ago in-house, I found out that the patents that were being filed we're software related, we're algorithm related. The click and clack relays were being replaced by software. You no longer had all the mechanical things, you had software replacing that. And one of the problems that we have here is we need to make sure we secure our patents and if we're a leader in software, let's maintain software patents. Let's not get bulldozed by a few companies that get a problem with what they call a troll went after them for uh, software violations. A lot of these companies are the very things that turn around and they enforce their software patents on the small individual companies. So software patents are very important to the United States future and let's not trash them. Also along this line for this alliance and others, our government invests in a lot of different universities and research 
more so than in the past. In the past, the company I worked for invested in a lot of different universities, had different uh, uh, patents and, and cooperative engineering efforts. Those efforts have been replaced a lot because a lot of the companies aren't doing that anymore. They're replaced by the U.S. government. So when the Department of Energy teams up with a university, let's make sure the patents are available to all of the U.S. citizens and the companies here and you to utilize. Not that the university, along with some foreign country or foreign corporation, ends up making an agreement where these patents that you're paying for with U.S. dollars from the Energy Department or some other Commerce Department uh, agency are not available for you to use. And this is very important to keep in mind. And also along with the patent technology moving out of the United States with the engineering, we've got to be careful that we are able to use the energy, that we are able to harvest the thorium and have the processes that are going to be patented, have the patents right here in the U.S. And so when you have ideas, bring forward, maybe the alliance can be a, a collect, collection of ideas. And, and help push patents that are filed here in the U.S. by U.S. people. And maybe the Alliance, if you're a member of the Alliance, you can also use that technology in your business. But it's very important that we don't lose our edge because the United States has always been the innovator. U.S. universities are still the premier universities. The foreign students from Asia, from Europe, South America, they still come to the U.S. universities. They have the technology, and they're going to be the future if they leave our universities, go back over to their countries, file the patents in the United States, they're going to end up controlling things. It's going to be a point where maybe the U.S. can't take advantage of the thorium technology, because there's going to be a lot of patents filed in this area. The Asians are already uh, kind of leading in rare earth processing. If you go and look at the patents being filed, it's usually uh, Asia, some German, but mostly overseas, not the U.S. And we need to keep a very viable patent acquisition here in the United States with our companies to maintain the national security of the country. Even. We cannot fall behind, which is happening right now. And with a lot of companies outsourcing, the engineering is going to follow wherever the manufacturing is going. So we need to get more manufacturing back in the United States. I think the U.S. can be competitive in manufacturing, especially in high tech, where it's not so much the labor, it's the intellectual property, the ideas that are important. We need the engineering to be done here. We don't need our government to be funding engineering projects over in Asia or Europe or someplace else. Nor do we need our Commerce Department taking agreements with other foreign nationalities, foreign companies that are going to have the technology there, file the patents, and basically block us from practicing you know, the technology that originated from the U.S. And it's a, it's a disturbing trend, and I think we can all participate in making sure our politicians from a policy standpoint invest in the United States, invest in companies in the United States, encourage universities to work with U.S. companies, file the patents, protect our technology. Don't give it up. And the United States will be a leader into the future, if that's the case. So let's make sure, from a policy standpoint and from a standpoint that if you have a chance to do the engineering here or overseas, make it here. Now, as I said, when manufacturing moves, my experience, especially in-house with the Fortune 500 company, the engineering goes with the manufacturing because you want to be right there with the manufacturing for development of new products. 
So we need to make sure we get back manufacturing in the United States. We can't just be a service economy. And we need to make sure that the United States has control of the patents on thorium and thorium reactors and thorium processing. Thank you. One second. I just want to, uh, you know, thank you so much. I appreciate you doing the comments there, and yeah, we'll get there. So the uh, and I, I, so we have time for some questions sure. if you're willing to try and swing some questions. No problem. Without making people like sign an NDA and stuff. right and <laughs> non-disclosure. Yes, sir. So. So I have a very, very specific patent question. The company that, that Kim Johnson and Kevin and I have formed um, in my discussions with our intellectual property attorneys, one rather vociferously said, go file in China. Go file your IP in China. And I personally disagreed with him because I thought, well, OK, China may have recently formed their own patent office. They have no means for enforcement in terms of the legal infrastructure within the country itself. Furthermore, they're not yet an OECD participating country, to the best of my knowledge, with respect to PCT. I would like your opinion on that avenue. Put it this way, I, I've had a client and with this large corporation I was associated with file a patent over there uh, on some very good technology. China's trying to clean up their act, I would say. However, the problem that you have is once the technology is over there, there's no way to keep it from being protected. It will go out the back door. Um, I had a client, just a real short side note, I had a client that was going over there and I said, when you sit down with the Chinese representative of this company, tell them that you would like a share of the product sold out the back door on, on the third shift to the rest of Asia. He said, well, I don't sell in Asia. I said, that doesn't matter, just ask for the profits. And he, he said, well, I'm going to be embarrassed. I said, don't be embarrassed. He's going to understand. So the CEO president went over there, and I said, I don't have to attend with you, but just be firm. And he said, the first time I said it, it was like a shock. There was about 60 people around the table, mostly you know, the host, host company and their officers. And the president pretended he didn't understand what he said. He spoke perfect English, of course. <laughs> and then he repeated it. Could I have the profits out the back door? About the third time, the president said, OK, who told you that in English? He said, well, my patent attorney, Mike Thiemel, told me that. Well, he's a very smart man. You can have 10% of everything we sell out the back door. So millions of dollars fell to the bottom line. Also, the patent that we had had all kinds of problems getting issued in China with different office actions. They didn't like the claim structure. You know, it was issued in the United States, issued in Europe, issued in 40-some different countries, but for some reason, China couldn't issue it. The reason they couldn't issue it is that they were manufacturing it and selling it, and they didn't want it to issue. So there, there's some of that going on. But SIPO is trying to improve, was at the seminar, they're talking about strengthening their patent laws, strengthening their patent courts. So they're, they're trying to make an effort, but there's no way if you push your technology over there, the future generations of that technology are the Chinese, going to be owned by the Chinese, not you or your shareholders. China's been patent, been uh, stealing our intellectual property for years. What's to say we can't do the same thing when they own the thorium patents? There's one answer to that, U.S. federal courts. We actually have a system. We're a land of laws. <laughs> We're a land of laws. Uh, federal courts will not allow you to steal technology here. Recently, uh, the Chinese company Sunit uh, they bought out Nexon in uh, Calgary. Uh, what's to stop them from buying out when uh, some of these companies go public? What's to stop them? Would just got to solely depend on the federal government? They're just gonna, they just want to buy the, uh, like one reason wanted it was the fracking technologies they could use over there. It's just intellectual. That, that's exactly what they're doing in the United States. They're buying up companies and assets for the technology. It is occurring. And then to address your thing as far as filing, I'd first file a PCT case here in the U.S., maybe designating China, and see if you're going to have sales over there sufficient to do it. But try to keep the technology here in the United States and the engineering here in the United States. That's the key. Has, has 3D printers have any effect on the patent industry? 
patent industry, um, I, I would say on 3D printers, you're saying? Yes. Yeah, I mean, people are patenting 3D printers. People using 3D printers uh, for, to create uh, products that can be patented. There, there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. I mean, CAD CAM program's been around, you know, 3D programs. Uh, very, very valuable, very useful in creating uh, the drawings and technology are, for the patent. Are you talking about people taking CAD files of patented objects and making their own without paying for them? Yeah, I was just wondering its effect. That's a big yeah, thing. Yeah, that, that is. I mean, it's the equivalent of like copying a song. You know? It is. It's, you can get grab that. And by the way, software too needs to be protected by the patents, obviously, but also by copyrights. And we're a burn convention country as well as most of the world. At the time of creation, you don't have to have a C and a circle on it. It is copyrighted at the time of creation by the author. Then, of course, if you're a company, make sure that that party is an employee of yours. And if a contractor, make sure you have an assignment so you actually own the software. Is there a serious effort to plug the holes in the patent law such that uh, research paid by U.S. dollars uh, can, all, can only lead to a patent that's filed by a U.S. person or, or company? You, you're going to have to talk to your politicians about that and get them going because right now I don't see anything, I don't see a serious effort at all. Well, let's thank uh, Mr. Femmel for coming. Thank you so much, Mike. I really appreciate you doing this.